from Taiwan's mountainsides, evacuees kept arriving. We watched as up to 50 people an hour were flown into a makeshift rescue center. Some were seriously hurt, many were barely injured. Then, inside, we saw those who still hope. Those whose missing relatives did not emerge from the military helicopters. We saw the typhoon's impact as we traveled through the southern valleys. Heavy rain and swollen rivers still threaten. Beneath raised roads lie buried buildings like here, the destroyed route preventing lorries of aid getting to the worst affected villages. This is where the road to Chowlin just crumbles away. And here is why tons of dirt, of debris, uprooted trees, homes lifted and moved down the side of the mountain. Until last week, Lee lived here with his family. But then his home was crushed underneath here somewhere. The original house had two stories, he says. Now it's all disappeared under the mud. Many in Taiwan are now looking towards the president. He visited survivors today and was criticized by some for the scale of the government's rescue effort. Should Taiwan not have been more prepared for, for this weather that was coming? No, this area, this is the first time in many years. That is why they, are, they were not fully prepared. If they were, they should have been evacuated uh, much earlier. Just because they stayed in where they live. And, but you see, they didn't, they didn't realize how serious the uh, disaster was. The rescues go on, and yet no one can calculate the total number of people here still missing. Rohit Katsu, News at 10, Taiwan.